and uh, today we're going to cover uh, the rods I use for bass fishing uh, in Ohio, tournament bass fishing at the club level. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys have requested that, hey, why don't you run down the, the rods that you use for uh, the different things, that the uh, different techniques that you use them for. So I figured, what the heck, uh, I don't have any repairs to do today. And uh, so I set the camera up and I put a little, little grid on here uh, on my table in order to, my workbench, in order to kind of show how these rods bend and you can compare one to the other as I go over what rods I have and what, what I use them for. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, one of my bread and butter rods. This is a G. Loomis rod. Uh, it's, it's a GLX. It's listed as fast action. It's the MBR uh, 783C. It's a uh, 6 foot 6. I use this predominantly for spinnerbait fishing. Uh, anywhere from quarter ounce to uh, half ounce spinner baits. Also, I'll use buzz baits at about the same size. With my spinner baits, I like to use uh, Maxima line 10 pound test. It's a monofilament line. Uh, it has a minimal stretch. It's high, highly abrasive resistant. It's an old school line, but it's worked for me for a lot of years and I just haven't changed. And I'll use the same line for buzz bait fishing as well. And what I want to show you here is how this rod bends. They call it the parabolics of the rod. And basically I just have, like I said, I have this grid laid out here to get an idea, a rough idea of how, you know, I'm going to rate these rods. This is listed as a fast rod. And as you can see, where it says fast here, this is about where, where the, the, the quick, the fast bend starts to go into the more of a back, the backbone of the rod, up the rod blank up here. I'm really concerned about the last three or four feet of the rod, um, really last three feet of the rod, that'll dictate what type of a rod it is and what I'll use it for. Uh, this rod here is listed as fast, and you can see where it starts to get into the backbone. This gives, with this fast tip, it gives me the ability to cast accurately uh, to targets with a spinner bait. Um, <clears throat> just a flick of the wrist and uh, off the bait goes and it, and it works really well. And then you get into the backbone of the rod where you know you, it starts to get stiff here in the middle. And once you get a fish on, that gives you uh, the ability to control the fish and steer it and get it to the boat and, uh, and, and, and land it a lot easier. The next rod I'm bringing to the bench is uh, my G Loomis and it's a uh, BCR 802 it's six foot eight and uh, it's listed as an extra fast tip and this is what I'll, I'll use for worm fishing Texas rigging uh, worm fishing um, you know sometimes I'll throw some Sankos with this but it's mostly it's mostly what I use for Texas rig worm fishing uh, it can be around structure or weed break lines doesn't really matter and uh, this rod is loaded up with recoil guides, and I use uh, XT, a Berkeley XT, uh, Trilene XT, in a 10-pound test clear with this. Now, you know, if I was down south, you know, that would be this would be way under under power for you know uh, hoisting in five, six, eight, nine-pound fish. But here in Ohio, you know, if you get a four-pounder, you got a good one. And this is all the rod and all the line you need for a four-pounder. So. Uh, You'll get to see how this is listed as an extra fast tip, and you can just see how fast this picks this this bends right here. And then in the fast zone, you'll start to see where it starts to get some backbone to it. And by the time you get down here and in the medium fast zone, it's got some backbone to it. So you, when you set the hook, you really get into this part of the rod, and you really can bury that hook in there. I like to use a two or three aught owner uh, angle shanked hooks. They're very sharp. I get good hook penetration with them, and as you can see, into the middle of the rod here, you start to it's you really start to get some backbone here. So this is what I use for worm fishing. I usually throw anywhere from a sixteenth to a quarter ounce uh, bullet weight with this. Okay, this rod here, this is a rod I made, uh, I, I assembled, it's a G. Loomis Slate Custom Blank. Uh, it's, it's, list, it's an MB843, uh, and so it's a, a three power rod, which is a kind of a medium heavy rod, and it's got an extra fast tip on it. Uh, what I'll use this for is, is I'll pitch 
uh, jigs with this. Uh, I'll pitch real heavy uh, Texas rig, Texas rigs, maybe on some, uh, you know, in the weeds, you know, when I want to penetrate into the weeds, you know, three quarter ounce uh, bullet weights. Uh, and as you'll see, it's got, a, it's got a pretty fast tip, so it's real nice for pitching. I've got the micro guides on it uh, that are all uh, by recoil. And uh, I'll use braid on this a lot. And you can see this has got a fat, extra fast. It's, it's somewhere between extra fast and fast, in my opinion. But you can really see how the backbone starts to come into play right in this area, in the medium fast zone it starts to get really stiff. So when I'm, when I'm pitching in some heavy cover, some heavy weeds on a brake line, and I really want to stick them, and I'm using bigger hooks, four or five odd hooks, uh, with, a, with a thicker shank, a thicker, heavier point, and I really need to, really need to poke them good, uh, this is, what I'll, this is the, the rod I'll use for it. This is a rod that's very similar to the rod that I that uh, I just showed. I will also use this one for Carolina rigging, but this is a, a G Loomis mahogany. Uh, it's like a GL2 rod. Uh, it's a, a custom blank. It is also an 843. Uh, this is basically I use for this. I use the same same techniques on it. But if I want to have one bullet weight uh, with a maybe a craw on it or a, or a big worm. And one with you know the opposite on you know uh, just a regular jig, uh, you know I'll have both of these rigged up and on the deck of my boat when I feel that I can get them on a on a deep bite. This rod here is the first of two crankbait rods that I keep on the boat. This is a made by uh, Batson. It's a rain shadow. Uh, I, I made this rod uh, for myself. Uh, it's a CB70 medium heavy, 10 to 20 pound, 3 8 to 1 ounce. This is a great crankbait rod. Um, I think this is one of the finest setups that I've put together on the Rain Shadow product. I will match this, this crankbait rod up with any crankbait rod out there. I don't care who makes it. I think it's a great piece of equipment. And as you can see, we're going to bend more into, the, in, into this zone over here. I may have to move the camera a little bit for you so you can you can actually see the zone that we're in where we're going to bend, but it's going to be more into the into the moderate area here. As you can tell, the top of the rod bends more evenly. It doesn't have that quick bend like like the extra fast or the fast tips do, but it's going to bend more on a gradual into this moderate to medium fast uh, area of the rod blank. And what that's that's great for it's great for the crank throwing the crankbait rods, <clears throat> the crankbaits, and uh, really when you get when you get the fish on and you're fighting the fish with the middle part of the rod, it gives you it gives you the opportunity to be able to to have a lot of shock. And if the, the fish wants to run, you can load the rod up, and a lot of times when you're throwing crankbaits, the fish have a tendency to jump, and you want to be able to give line back without giving slack. And as soon as you give slack to to a fish. Uh, they can they can throw that crankbait, dislodge it out of their mouth, and and, uh, and you bring in nothing but your bait, and you lose the fish. Uh, so this has been a really good rod for me. Um, I highly recommend this Rain Shadow crankbait series rods. Uh, it's a it's a blend. It's not a fiberglass, and it's not a not heavy composite, but it's a blended rod. It's a it's a great rod. This is also uh, a crankbait rod that I, I keep on the boat. It's the, it's, it's the same as the other uh, CB70, uh, but it's, it's a, uh, just a medium instead of a medium heavy. So it's, it's for throwing lighter crankbaits. This is what I throw, the rod I use to throw my square bills. And it, and it works very well for throwing square bills. You can throw a lot of light crankbaits, you know, uh, crankbaits that weigh a half ounce or less even. And, uh, and you can sail them out there quite a ways and it's got a lot of sensitivity to it and as you can see this rod bends way down into the, into the medium fast or, or the moderate area for uh, you know where, where it starts to load up so it's like all the other like the other rod the other crankbait rod it really gives you a lot of bend in the rod in order to give line back without giving any slack and you can see where it bends more in the middle than it does near the tip. And uh, you know, this is a, a real fine rod. 
you know you can catch fish up to you know four four and a half pounds with this and really not feel like you're being overmatched because it does have a lot of strength here in you know in the middle of the rod this is a, a rain shadow rod that I built that I use for uh, Carolina rigging uh, it's a IMB 843 and uh, it's kind of like the 843 uh, Loomis rod but it doesn't have as fast of a tip it's got a lot of backbone to it and all these rods I'm showing you are between six foot eight and seven foot uh, I'm not I don't like to throw the real big long rods even though I am over six feet tall I don't like you know the, the, the you know the seven foot seven foot six rods as much so I all the seven footers I'll take I'll take them down to six foot eight usually unless it's for really throwing a long distance like a like a one ounce Carolina rig rod and as you can see here this is in the in the in this area here of fast right I'd say right in the middle right in the middle of fast to uh, you know it's not an extra fast it's not a medium fast but it really has serious backbone to it you can see you know where it really starts to load up in this part of the rod which is a, which is great because <clears throat> when you're Carolina rigging and you're and you're you've got your bait way out there and you're dragging it and and pausing and pick it up and you feel that there's something running off with your bait and you really want to reel all that slack down and just jam it and uh, you want a rod that's got the backbone when you need it but you also want sensitivity on the tip so when you you can feel them pick it up so this uh this rain shadow rod here, the IMB 843, 10 to 17 pound test, one quarter to three ounce weight, and the RX-7 blend has been a real good rod for Carolina rigging for me. Okay, I do throw spinning rods. I do have a, a, a need to have spinning rods on the boat. This is a, a rain shadow XSB 842. Uh, this is a, like a medium heavy type blank um, it's they call it an all-purpose rod you can use it for bait casting or you can th use it for spinner uh, spinning rods what I like to do is if, if I'm pitching around um, some boat docks uh, I, this is the rod I like to use and it's got a fast tip so I got I have good control I can skip it if I want to uh, I can back off and pitch it a long ways and I can cast it so it's very versatile I'm throwing uh, soft plastics with this and various combinations of baits and you can see on the tip here that it's in the it's in this range here uh, extra extra fast to fast but you but when I really pull on it you can see it starts to load up in this medium fast zone so we're already getting good backbone here and what that what that does is that gives a good good uh, hook setting power and to be able to pull fish away from cover with this bait, with this rod, and have the ability and control with a spinning rod, uh, spinning reel, to be able to do that with. And I've got the uh, wire guides on here. These are from Netcraft. These are their version of the recoil style guides. Okay. Uh, now this rod here. Uh, this is a Shimano that I that I reconditioned. I stripped it all the way down uh, to the bare blank. Put a new put a new handle on it. The kind of handle I wanted to have on it. Uh, very basic, just cork in a in a real seat. Nothing fancy. Uh, but I did put uh, you know new Fuji guides on it that are that have sick rings in them because I, this is my rod. It's a six foot three. And this is the rod I use for skipping soft baits plastics under boat docks so it's a short the shortest rod I keep on the boat but I can skip uh, Sankos and tubes way up underneath boat docks up underneath pontoon boats and this really gets it done and uh, it, and you know you can pull it's because it has some backbone as I'll show you you can pull fish out from underneath there as long as you're using braided line and as you can see it's got it's got a fast tip it's in this fast area uh, you know closer to the medium fast but it's right in this area where, where it loads up but it does have enough backbone you'll see it has the backbone here and you can you can pull some fish you know out from underneath docks uh, I don't use this one as, as often as I do the rain shadow that I just showed 
uh, because this one it does get a little dicey it's a shorter rod it doesn't have quite as much backbone uh, you know so it gets a little scary when you get a good sized fish on underneath the dock with this particular rod but when they're way up in there there has to be a trade-off I can't use the I can't use a bigger rod to get where I need to get with this with the uh, the bigger longer rod uh, with that has more power I really need to be able to skip something right you know right on right on top of the surface and get it up underneath the boat docks and this is the rod I go to obviously I'm going to use braid with that 30 to 40 pound test braid and when I get them on I just uh, do my best to get them out from underneath all that junk okay that's the rundown for uh, what I use and uh, why I use it I hope you enjoyed it and uh, hope my little graph helped you out see you next time catch a biggin